Welcome back, Shannon. I was happy you were able to um, keep your commitment to our follow-up um, meeting. So um, last week you came in for your diagnosis um, meeting. Um, how did you feel about that? Um, well, to be honest, really, really nervous, um, scared. Don't know what to expect. A little confused because of all the terminology that they use, medical terminology that they use. I'm just not really familiar with. So you're uh, feeling uncertain. Definitely. Um, what other things were you feeling following our um, initial meeting with the nurse practitioner? Well, the diagnosis of the HIV infection. Um, it's just overwhelming. You know, I almost just wanted to kind of end it all. I've had friends who have died from HIV, and I know what the ending's like, and I just don't know that I want to go there. So you say um, ending it all. Are you talking about suicide? I did have that thought initially. Um, it's kind of went away some now. So what are your, what do you perceive your reasons to continue to be? Um, well, I have a pretty good life other than this, you know, I have a decent family, have lots of friends. Um, nobody knows about any of this yet, so um, I have one friend that knows and that's it. So at some point I'm going to have to tell my parents. Well, how did your friend react to the news? They were supportive, shocked, um, concerned, upset, just the same as I was, but I'm supportive and you know, said that they would be in there, so. So he sounds like a good friend who cares about you. Definitely. So we have a lot of options as far as um, care is concerned, um, counseling, um, housing. Um, but before we get into our options, I really want to know what you want. So what is your ideal outcome post-diagnosis? Um, well, to figure out some way to mentally manage all of this, but um, also, you know, at, like I said, I'm, at some point I'm going to have to tell my parents and have no idea how that's going to go. So. so you're a little afraid to tell the parents. Um, you're, you're afraid of um, what you would say kind of going through what some of your friends went through after diagnosis, um, and you're feeling a little hopeless. Is that accurate? Yeah, a whole lot of hopeless, but um, really at this point, you know, it's just a matter of, I don't know how my parents are going to react to it all, so, you know, I'm just really afraid about how do you go on after this diagnosis? How does your social life happen? How does your family life happen? How does your you know, love life happen, how, do we, any of, how does any of that go on? So it's just overwhelming. Right. And I can certainly imagine how overwhelming it is. Um, but it sounds like you have a good starting point with your friend as um, a beginning support system. And so hopefully I can give you um, some resources and contacts and, um, and other things that can strengthen that network of support systems for you. Um, and so, as far as care, what do you think you'll do? Medical care. Um, again, I don't know. It's all new and kind of foreign to me. So, um, definitely, you know, you're going to have to be put on some medications and stuff. Um, so, certainly some help with maybe the expense of that because I know it's right. the cost is overwhelming. So, For sure. There are a lot of grants and um, benefits that you can receive to lower the, um, the financial burden of uh, retroviral therapy. Um, so that can be something I can guide you to um, when you're ready. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how ready do you perceive yourself to be um, for retroviral therapy? Um, you know, not really ready at all. Um, but I guess if I had to put it on a scale, I don't have a choice, so probably four or five. Four. So it sounds like you recognize that you have a lot to live for. Um, friends and parents, um, you want to live, I imagine you want to live a, a normal life or as normal life as you can, but you're also struggling with some 
hopelessness, um, and these things might seem overbearing at this point, but I do believe that you've already done a great deal of work. So you've taken the initiative to get tested, um, to keep this appointment. You didn't have to show up today, um, which is a big step. Um, and you also have, you seem to have started um, building a support network with your best friend. Um, and so I really do think you're off to a great start. Um, I would love to meet with you again. What, what time or date um, are you available for? I'm kind of open at this point, so. Okay, well, does next week sound good? Definitely, yeah. Okay, well, let's schedule something for, um, do you work next week or are there any conflicts? I'm pretty open, so okay. just whenever so it works for you. How about next Monday? Okay, sounds good. Today? Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's, um, I was happy to see you again, so. Thanks. Thank you. Six minutes. Ugh. That sounds pretty good.